Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Warhammer 40k Warp Forge, which I'm really excited to be saying. Um, and I had some friends of mine from the Spellslickers community, shout out to um, good old Boss of Blades, who actually pinged me and said, hey, did you know there's some new stuff going on? Um, and I had kind of just randomly checked the Discord after all of August and most of September not checking it. Um, and there's so many new things, but I'm going to break it down because I didn't want to do like a huge video where we're covering everything else. I kind of wanted to go piece by piece because also there are a lot of things changing and a lot of layers to those changes. Um, so today what I wanted to go over um, were the offense and defense cards, which is... Um, sort of a big change but also something we kind of knew was coming um with the the counter attack cards that we had had uh prior so like if you were starting if you were going second you would get some sort of card um to quote like balance the drawback of going second but actually they built that out and sort of expanded that in a way that's definitely interesting um although i haven't played any games with the cards yet and i'm sure it's going to take time to like craft them or open them or exactly how that works because all of them are special cards which is a different rarity um i definitely wanted to kind of you know welcome folks back to warforge uh because now we have moved from closed alpha to closed beta um i loved playing closed alpha for about a month there just weren't any changes and so i naturally kind of shifted and moved off um have been playing and really loving dc dual force but this is a game that i have felt has is has a lot of promise um and honestly i just i kind of got lost because uh, or sort of the game was lost on me after playing too many bots um and without the duplicate protection it just took forever to build certain things um but now that there's like crafting and the other stuff i'll go over that in the next video but let's just stick with and go to the actual article um that warforge put out about what is changing um and there's quite a lot that's changing but i think just starting with a part of the game that is almost always talked about right like you always want to go first why is it better to go first is it better to go second with certain factions like um you know are there certain factions that love their counterattack card for example i was always partial to tyranids uh going second because they had a counterattack card which reduced the uh, cost of a card by two. And so it meant you could play your four drop on turn one because you start with two energy. Um, and so, for instance, that, in that deck, I wanted to go, or at least I felt like I wanted to go second. Um, and I always like how, deck, how card games try to address this issue. So what they decided to do was basically um, really uh, kind of immerse the card players into this idea of like you're attacking or defending which i think is like really interesting and i do think that that plays really well into what you know warhammer 40k is trying to do right like you're invading or you're defending um and they sort of add a bit of complexity to it in a way that i think is accessible right so um please don't mind my scrolling but i figure we we might as well at least kind of you know t uh go over a little bit of the article and then I can, we can go through the offense and defense cards for each faction um, and just kind of do some like reactions. I looked at a couple of them, but certainly not all of them. So, um, right, player, I love how they say eagle-eyed players might have noticed that the battlefield they fight on always corresponds with the faction that's playing second against them, right? Like that's, they have a home field advantage and that also affected, right? Like if you were at your home field, um, and you're, you're right, you're going second, you would have that counterattack card. Um, so th this update's already gone through, which is sweet. We're all going to look at those cards. Um, at the beginning of the match, both players will face an important choice after drawing their initial hands. The attacker will get to decide the conditions in which they are launching their assault by selecting an offense card. And I'm not sure if it shows you like all three or exactly how that works. We'll, we'll find out. Um, but I do believe you have to get the cards before you can, like I don't think you automatically get them the attacker will get to decide the conditions in which they'll launch their assault while the defender will choose how they decide to set up their defenses right and I, I really loved one of the things that drew me to this game was the sort of like the 
the different um, settings. I think that's just such a cool way to make it feel like more than a card game. Um, so let's read a little bit more. So offense cards take immediate effect after the game begins, visually transforming the entire battlefield and adding an environmental effect that will impact both players. So there's like warp storm and there's like lightning strike and like all these cool things. So I think it's going to make the game stick out a little bit more and feel less like, oh, this is another card game and, and more of like, no, this is like a strategy war card game thing. Um, and they put out some examples, which I love, right? Like, would it be better to attack an Imperial world defended by Ultramarines during a thunderstorm, which deals one damage to a random troop at the start of each turn? Or perhaps your deck would find an easier time assaulting a Black Legion fleet during a warp storm, which reduces the cost of the first stratagem played each turn by one. Or maybe you find it best when attacking the Goth Orc base to do it a night attack, which gives camouflage for one turn to a troop when it's deployed. So I just, I love stuff like this, right? Like the concept is easy to understand. You're attacking, you're defending, you get options to attack or defend based on what you're seeing, right? So there's a little, you get a little bit more agency. As the player going second, you can say this effect, whether it's random, whatever it is, um, although it, it can affect both players, which I, I, is written into the cards um you know uh what does that do for me and how does it how does it kind of give me a, a couple percentage bumps to my win rate in this specific matchup right so then on the other hand at the same time the defending player will select how to use their home advantage most effectively instead of always receiving the same bonus card when going second right which is what the system they had before a defending player will now be given a choice between three different defense cards so what I love about this is they've given players going first something that's interesting, but not too obviously powerful to make going first like even better. Um, and then they've also given defending players more options, right? So this means um, the, the available defense choices will still depend on the defending player's faction. So every faction counts with different ways to respond to assaults, right? So again, it, it all revolves around like, who your faction is and who their faction is and are you attacking or defending so there's kind of a lot of different permutations of it which uh just adds you know more depth to the game which i think um will be helpful uh this means they'll be able to see the warlord and faction they are playing against to best tailor their game plan an ultramarine player defending against an orc invasion right which tends to go kind of wide or sort of like combo off and spit out a bunch of orcs might want to stick with the classic high factory defense probably uh to gain a temporary cost reduction and establish their board faster but if they're defending against the necrons the sawtack army they might consider taking a fire strike turret defense card which deals two damage to an enemy and would allow them to deal with an early remnant so i just really love this i mean i haven't gotten to play with it like i said because i'm just getting back to warp forge um but I, the this idea on on paper seems like a way to give the game a little bit more of an identity um although i'm sure other games do th things in this wheelhouse but a little bit more of an identity um a little bit more of a layer of strategy to it um and also i think a creative way of addressing the sort of first player goes second player um so unlocking these cards when you first set foot on the battlefields of warhammer 40k warforged you will not have access to these offense and defense cards to allow new players to focus on learning the ropes of the game first um you know i i feel kind of mixed about that right like obviously if offense and defense are a part of the game then i would want new players to understand that um but i think what they're saying here is there's enough complexity to the game just focus on you know getting the right units for your deck getting the right stratagems for your deck and kind of go from there as you progress and further your knowledge of the different factions in the game, you will unlock new offense and defense options that will be available to you whenever you command that faction um, and attack. Every faction will have a unique selection of three different offense cards and three different defense cards, so there's a lot to discover in the future, and, and we've got it now. So um, if you're like me and played a ton of the alpha for like a month, and then really there was kind of not much, nowhere to really go from there, um, it seems like not only are we in closed beta and there are a lot of systems coming out, there's this um, offense defense that's live, there's the game economy that's live, um, and there's even a post from October 5th 
um, basically saying we're going to start getting some new cards soon, um, which also, honestly, is very exciting. Um, so, yeah. So if you want to go read the articles, like, feel free. I actually really appreciate that they took the time to write these up. Um, but I did not want to... Okay. Oh, we got logged out. Okay. Sorry, I was, like, confused. I thought it was going to close it all out. And I was like, should I pause and edit? It's fine. Okay, so we're back in. So I didn't want to leave the video. Also, they have these... I guess they're these foils? I'm not really sure. Well, we're going to find out when we start playing again. Um, but I wanted to go through all the offense and defense cards uh, for each faction because... Um, that, that is something that's new to the game and should be really interesting. So, let's kick it off. Ultramarines. Um, we've got Thunderstorm. They reference that in the article. It deals one damage to a random troop. Obviously, that includes you and your opponent. Um, not super powerful, obviously. And I don't think it should be because you're on offense. And going first usually has a pretty clear um, advantage because because this... Not dissimilar to DC Dual Force, you know, for those viewers who may be watching this. Um, you know, where DC Dual Force kind of has that tug of war of, like, they you set up a board, they try to clear it. They set up a board, you try to clear it. Um, there, There is a similarity, definitely, with this game, where you have to be attacking their, their Warlord um, and really choose, do I need to clear this unit um, to then deal damage? Uh, or can I just go face, right, and burn them out? So, Thunderstorm, thinking about one damage to a random troop, um, you know, obviously it's not uh, a card that you would probably run in your deck, but if it's free, maybe there's a world in which, okay, you're playing against uh, orcs, which are spitting out a bunch of troops. Maybe I'd rather take the chance that because they're on average going to have more troops than me, that it's more likely for the Thunderstorm to hit them. So, that's, that's interesting. Orbital Bombardment, super cool graphics, straight out of the uh, the like different Warhammer games we've played. Um, I'll do this because it's easier to read. So each turn, there is a 10% chance that all units receive 3 damage. So that's interesting. I mean, this makes me think of control. Like you, again, like into aggro or into something that's going to go a little bit wider, you're like totally fine with the board taking 3 damage. Um, and maybe you maybe you want to go late. And then fleet support, which is kind of a tried and true sort of method. The first troop each turn costs one less. Um, so this obviously helps you, you know, set up your board. But the question I kind of have, so it says optional effect affecting both players that you can choose to activate when you go first. So I, I'm what I'm trying to understand is if fleet support also affects your opponent. Which, reading this, it seems like it does. So, it's a trade-off, right? Obviously, you're letting your opponent potentially set up. But, um, you know, let's say you're playing against something that's kind of the same speed as you. Um, maybe it stands to reason because you're going first. Like, you would want fleet support. Um, so, the, these are interesting. These are kind of more towards, like, not caring because your opponent has more units than you. This is a little bit more like I want to race. So maybe this could be better into control. I'm not really sure. It's it's hard to evaluate these, especially because there's a randomness to them. So that's Ultramarine offense, offense rather. So you've got the, the good old orcs, Spore Cloud. At the end of each player's turn, their damage troops gain one melee and ranged attack. So that's interesting. Um, certainly there are a lot of ways for orcs to kind of use this because as long as they have enough health, um, through the plus two health card and the sort of like combo-y nature of orcs using, uh, I think it's the Green Horde, um, which was one of my favorite decks to play. Um, there's definitely many lines where like your troops may still be alive, but they've taken some damage and then just turning them into more powerful ones. So that's interesting. Night attack, when a troop is deployed, it gains camouflage. Camouflage, I think, was one of the weaker keywords when I was playing. Um... Stratagems can be very crucial to certain decks, but in general, obviously, like having something like, uh, like what was it, invisible or like the sneak one where you literally can't target them, period, um, was a lot more powerful than camouflage. But this, this could be good. 
against certain uh, strategies. Dust Storm, it took me a second, right? When a troop attacks, it has 25% chance of attacking a random enemy. So obviously when you're maybe playing against control as a more aggressive deck or go wide strategy, they need to answer your things in a certain like specific way. So Dust Storm actually might, it wouldn't screw you up necessarily because you're kind of just throwing your units in like the meat grinder. Um, but if it affects their units, right, and they're attacking the wrong or have the chance of attacking the wrong units because of Dust Storm, that actually could really um, benefit some sort of orc strategy. So they, these like individually seem like a little bit more enticing, I guess. Or that you can sort of utilize them a little bit better than the Ultramarines. Um, just kind of like going off that. All right. The Eldar, which I think everyone had been saying from kind of day one, uh, just have the one of the highest, if not the highest, win rates. Um, so Webway Rift. So at the end of each player's turn, if they have unspent energy, they draw a card. So this is interesting because maybe you play this against Ultramarines. Uh, who use a lot of codex units where it says um, if you've used all your energy this turn get an effect webway rift would essentially say you can opt in or opt out when you want to draw a card and they have to have a hard choice between drawing a card or trying to proc their codex right where then it's kind of one-sided and you would be drawing the extra card so that's definitely an interesting one for any circuit both players gain one energy at the start of the match um, so again, this sort of signals, okay, I'm playing against aggro and I want to establish myself sooner, um, is kind of what that makes me think of. Blackout. Each turn, there's a 50% chance that a random troop gets blind. Um, this one is hard to evaluate. I feel like I heard some people talking about this on the discord. Um, so just a coin flip that you're going to blind yourself or the enemy, I... I mean, with Eldar, they're pretty strong, specifically with ranged attack. So I guess maybe in the mirror match, you would play this against, like you're on offense and you're and the defending player is Eldar. Maybe this would be good, or it would be good decent or decent into Ultramarine as well. But the fact that this can hit your own troops seems like a huge risk so i'd be kind of surprised if blackout gets chosen unless you're playing a seriously control heavy version of eldar where like you wouldn't care if a random unit gets blinded but just having the chance that their units can be blinded and you can sort of best them i'm not again i think these are kind of hard to evaluate okay necron just moving along here um, Solar Storm. Whenever a stratagem is played, there's a 25% chance that a random unit receives one damage. Okay. Well, they have plenty of like cheap stratagems to play um, in a lot of those. And, and, and the stratagem synergies are like probably one of the most attractive things about playing Necrons. So 25% chance that a random unit. I would say that's, pr that's probably going to be pretty good, especially if you're playing Scarabs. Um, so you wouldn't really care if one of your random scarabs dies, but also it might help you clear your enemy's board. So that, that could be decent. Immortal beams. At the end of each player's turn, heal one to a random unit they control. Okay. So, so it's parody, except you're Necrons, and so your health is going to matter more because you have remnant and things like that to sort of keep your your necrons going so mortal beams i could definitely see being pretty decent earthquake at the start of each turn stun a random troop seems like a good anti-aggro potentially anti-mid-range card um especially if you're able to get some of the smaller units on the board so then you wouldn't really care if it potentially stuns you the the randomness to all these is going to be interesting will it be a good random or a bad random Hard to say, but I, I think the randomness makes it so that turn one is not just straight up getting a buff, right? Because before they didn't have offense cards. Um, you just went first. Uh, so I, I think they're they're really trying their best here to make things not as uh, 
you know, not as crazy. So who knows? Maybe the cards that are more like parody based are actually going to be pretty good because it's just a straight up effect that that faction gets where they would not have gotten that on offense. All right. Warp Storm. Classic Chaos. Uh, Marines, Black Legion. First stratagem. Each turn costs one less. Uh, sort of hints towards, you know, your marks of chaos and things like that, um, which I definitely could see being pretty good if you're playing against, let's say, um, which faction uses the least stratagems? I guess it would be Tyranid to some degree. Because Ultramarines uses a good amount. So does the combo orcs. Obviously Chaos does. So does Necrons. And Eldar use a good bit. So maybe, maybe tied with Eldar. Warpstorm seems decent. Um, Hellfire Outburst. Each turn there's a 50% chance that a random unit receives two damage. I mean... For the fact that Chaos tends to go tall and just make these huge, beefy units with a lot of marks of Chaos, this does seem like it would help shore up some of your aggro matchup, because two damage wouldn't matter too much. But actually, two damage is, is quite a lot against some of the smaller, uh, more aggressive strategies. Demonic Feast. Whenever a troop dies, its owner refills one energy. Interesting. Very interesting. So you get energy for trading in maybe like your flank units and stuff like that. But you don't care if your opponent is getting that energy too. Okay, so I guess more of an aggr like aggressively knotted here. Um, that's interesting. I, it's it's really it's really I, I love that like these cards are really making me think. Um, how good are they, right? Okay, last but not least, the Tyranids, Sweeping Infestation. At the end of each turn, deal one damage to the Warlord with the highest health. Okay, so really trying to make sure you stay ahead. Which uh, So that probably wouldn't be with the Swarm Lord, which is more aggressively bent. Um, but it could be good with the Neurothrope, who is one of my favorite Warlords, because you can almost always heal yourself. Uh, with your um, stratagem that you get every turn. So that's interesting. Blazing Biomass. Whenever a player plays a stratagem, a friendly random troop gets plus one health. Okay. Well, this this does seem pretty good for Neurothrope specifically because you're almost using... You're trying to use your stratagem every turn. So getting that plus one health, and I'm not sure if Synapse interacts with this where you would get multiple triggers of plus one health but that could be interesting acid rain this one definitely caught my eyes a little bit all troops have vulnerable one so also seems again good with neurothrope because essentially your stratagem can deal two damage to any troop so i guess maybe if you're playing neurothrope into a more aggressive strategy acid rain could be really good um so those are all the offense cards um, really interesting, but definitely can't leave us knowing that we've got defense cards. All right, we'll go in reverse order here. All right, so defense cards for the Tyranids. Toxic Vapors. Deal one to three damage to an enemy. Nice. So you, you get this, and just one to three damage is pretty hefty for one. So that's that's definitely a nice defense card. Sporecaster Bio structure give plus two melee to a friendly unit this turn and it costs zero energy that's pretty dang good with any sort of synapse synergies as well plus two melee i would say health is one of the most important stats um but plus two melee probably isn't much you know it, it's nothing to sneeze at especially because it would cost zero and then digestion pool okay so they i was wondering if they kept it your next troop costs two less. I still imagine that digestion pool is going to be a pretty big pick because you have so many good ways of setting up, especially with Neurothrope, um, with digestion pool. But um, but it is it's cool that we're going to get we're probably going to see two completely different defense cards for each faction. Okay, Hellfire Pit deal three damage to a random enemy troop. Okay, for one, so similar to uh, to the other one. Throne of the Heretic, choose a Black Legion troop and put it into your hand. Okay. 
I mean, zero fetch any troop. That's, that's pretty good, I imagine. And then Hellfire Torch give a Dark Pact. Oh, is that what they're calling it now? Not a Marker of Chaos? Give a blessing from one of the... Oh, a Dark Pact. They changed that. To a friendly troop, which, which was the only one. Hellfire Torch last time. Um, okay, cool. Interesting. I mean, they definitely like similar theme. Okay. Resurrection Vault, reanimate a friendly remnant for zero. Yep, that could certainly be good. Your next stratagem costs two less. What kind of... Well, that... If I remember correctly, there's some pretty nasty stratagems that like... Five and eight. So, if you're playing maybe a more mid-range aggro matchup, maybe you want access to those like two turns sooner. Anything that usually costs two less is a scary thing to see. Because this this really does enable some pretty nuts stuff. And then Awaken Obelisk, classic, deal one damage to an enemy. Um, this was my, probably my least favorite um, going second card. So I think, I think Necron get a huge bump with uh, probably especially Divination Men here. Um, but I just felt like their defense card was one of the worst. So those that seems really nice for them. Okay, Aspect Shrine. Gain two Spirit Stones for one energy. Well, if you know Eldar at all, you know that Spirit Stones uh, is kind of makes makes their decks operate at like a very high powered level. Um, and one energy for two Spirit Stones that you can instantly collect seems like a dang good defense card. Webbury Entrance, the classic. Choose an infantry and put it into your hand, um, <clears throat> which I found to be fine. You know, no, nothing crazy, but definitely pretty solid. And then another zero energy. Give Shuriken one to a friendly unit this turn. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the weakest one, but could could see a bit more play in certain certain ways. But Aspect Shrine, this seems scary. Two Spirit Stones is a big difference because most of the early game Eldar cards require two Spirit Stones to see their full power um and this just uh you know essentially guarantees that so that's probably a little bit of a bump for them okay what do we got stun an enemy toxic bonfire i love i love all the orc cards um yeah i mean seems seems solid cost zero gretchen tower um honestly was really good probably is still really good for just going wide and um you know uh, pooping out a bunch of orcs and buffing them and all that good stuff. Extractor rig. Your next meal will cost two less. Okay, now we're talking because vehicles is a theme within orcs, but most of the vehicles were always like a little too high costed um, or just kind of clunky because they had like the combust thing where it would like also deal damage to your units and stuff like that. Extractor rig, I think, actually opens up um vehicles as a real deck potentially because well i shouldn't say deck but at least if you're playing vehicles in your deck or you're trying to make that strategy work if you're defending i think extractor rig is probably what you're picking because uh, again cost to us i can't say it enough so i'll keep saying it this is a scary ability to have it is much more powerful than you might think it is Last but not least on this side of things, we've got Ultramarines, which is probably the faction I will still continue to explore most in uh, closed beta, but also when the game actually releases. Deal two damage to an enemy, fire strike turrets. Um, so the other ones are zero deal, was it zero deal three or one deal one to three or something like that? Fire strike turrets. Um, just taking out an enemy. I mean, I could see this being good against um, orcs against um eldar um also it, it kind of helps you against chaos to, to stop them from going super tall on a unit so that's interesting high factory was the og next card costs one less turn still very good very good with codex as well but what do we got here light cover give armor one to a friendly infantry interesting okay armor one is a I mean, Armor 2 is obviously one of the more heftier keywords. Armor 1 is fine. Um, it doesn't really do much for a low health 
enemy because you still will take minimum one damage, right? Um, but that's interesting. Maybe a light cover would make sense in certain matchups um, that like can't really punch through like early enough. And maybe maybe could keep certain early game units alive, which could be pretty impactful. Um, but I like the addition of this. I, I like the kind of different identities that the Ultramarine cards have. Um, very, very interesting. Um, very interested to see how this all pans out. Love, love the, some of the new graphics. Um, there's so much going on here and I definitely can't cover it in one video. I promise I will, uh, try and get some more Warp Forge content up. Um, as I probably delve a little bit more back into this game after, you know, essentially, so I got my beta key very early. I was very lucky. I think on like July 15th, something like that. Played it, played the game basically for a month straight. Um, you know, yeah, I guess it kind of stopped around mid to late August just because uh, I sort of was going in between stuff. But anyway, some closing thoughts, some really promising changes, offense, defense cards, really interesting way to address and sort of expand the game's identity um, and their ability to address, you know, going first versus going second. Um, there's plenty coming down the pipe, it seems. So um, I'm interested to really see where this game goes because it felt really promising and then there was just no news of anything. Um, you know, who knows, maybe the summer, people were taking some time off of the summer or whatever. Um, but it feels like things are like really coming back to life. So if you love this game or you're willing to try it, this is probably one of the best times to do it. We're in closed beta. You don't get to keep your collection, but you can explore everything else. Um, I would say go back and look at some of my old videos. I'll put that in the description. Um, if you're interested, I did a video for every faction um, and really tried to optimize some of those builds with the collection that I had um, and that I still have, thankfully. Um, so anyways, uh, let me know what you think of Warp Forge and the video and all that stuff. And if you'd like to see more, um, I think I'm at least going to cover some of the changes and then maybe we'll get right back into it. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.